Hi, it's Anthea here. I'm going to have a destruction session. Um, I showed you a little doodle, doodle I did um, recently, and when I was partially shut down, and I linked everything. So for me, everything is linked, even if it looks like a tangled mess. Uh, I can connect this to that, to that, to that, um, what extreme needs. I've been told it's partly my creative brain plus um, exaggerated with post-traumatic stress disorder and bipolar disorder, seeing links and connections. So I won't explain everything, what it means, but it's symbolic to me enough that I've scribbled notes on it and it'll go in a journal which I will keep because I can't remember everything because my brain is so busy with all the connections all the time which makes it hard to do kind of ordinary things but I'll put it in my journal because my journals now are noting down anything symbolic that I might use creatively so in my novels for example so only seven pieces sold which is a little bit disappointing because it didn't have as much turnout as my first exhibition, possibly from the COVID, but it's okay. It's still the process I went through and I've got about a dozen pieces um, that I'm gifting to friends and family who are quite keen on them. So at least I'm getting rid of at least 20 of them. <laughs> Plus I'm going to destroy some right now. And when I say destroy, I'm going to cut them and later cut them off their canvases or cut them off their frames I mean and keep the cut parts until I feel inspired to make something with them which is what I've done previously so it's the process it's figuring sorting out things it's sort of like distilling it filtering it letting all the crap go and keeping the good stuff and uh, I like to turn it into stories, it's like everyone's got a story, so I don't want to talk too much about it because I want to get onto it. So I priced this one the highest so that it would be reluctant to sell, so it hasn't. So that's the last painting called Learning to Fly, after the Pink Floyd song, so I'm glad it's still there. That's going to go back up, I've got rid of the hooks, I've patched the holes, I've just got to lightly sand them. Um, um, I was quite pleased that Snowball didn't sell. She's the proposed cover of Pet Purpose. She's very symbolic. And I've uh, still got the Saw Purpose, which is the sequel to Pet Purpose. Um, heaps of symbolism for me. So the most symbolic paintings are going to go back up, along with, um, out of the four here, I'm going to keep the bee and the bird. which spell here Y and Z Wise. So I changed my name to Zenthi Wise. And so it's symbolic code for Zenthi Wise having a voice. The bee, the bumblebee doesn't die when it stings. It's very friendly unless it's threatened and it'll sting you, only if absolutely necessary. Whereas I'm going to get rid of the dragonfly and the butterfly, which are more linked to trauma. And too long to explain here. I'm going to um, slash those. It is going to be um, the Stray Spyroach. So the grenade represents triggers, and the cockroach, where the camera on its head represents um, basically being perved at, <laughs> basically. Um, yeah, it's to do with sexual trauma, but I don't want to go into it right now. Um, here's your bumblebee again, a friend wants this so it's small enough to go in a box to send to her. And this was just an experimenting with the, with the inks, seeing what they can do with paint. So this one was called Crazed because they're kind of crazed on the surface. So I'm going to get rid of that one. This one is called Saw Purpose as well, but a different spelling, same colouring. This colour scheme is this one, but this one here is heaps of layers and lots of name changes to represent the name change. I changed my name to Cynthia Wise. 
butterflies on a line, it can't escape because it's been restricted. And this one, purple dove, uh, was trying to fly above the great big mountains. Um, dove like in Australia, this is supposed to be. Um, but there was clouds, but I sort of abstracted them. So it was trying to fly above the trauma, the purple colour. This one called Synchronicity um, was an intense uh, connection I had with a man online and he was that bird and I was that bird and oh, so I was kind of manic when I did that one. Um, that one's a composite one. I probably won't be able to destroy it because it's a bit thick with cardboard from two previous paintings. But it's kind of like there's a, a monster in there. I didn't paint it that way, it just turned up. So I just sort of get rid of them. So in my novels I make composite characters. So they're not exactly, it's not exactly memoir. It's semi-autobiographical fiction. This one I'll keep for now, but I put it in a cupboard called Speak. Uh, it's to do with uh, speaking out about trauma. And the same for this one called NZ. Um, with my shocked little plug there. Um, with the bracelet that went through the fire. I will just put it in a cupboard out of the way for now. Not put it on my wall. Because um, there's heaps of links. It's basically both of those are mind maps. These are all different things because my mind goes from here to there and everywhere. So anyway, let's get to it. So I'll just put these in a safe spot out of the way. Okay, so just in case the camera cuts out, let's get started. So these are, I'm not going to go to waste, so I'll cut this off later keep the pieces and make a collage or something out of it but I want to get my knife with the yellow same thing means yellow or golden it also represents anger for me usually the anger also sunshine so all the colours have symbolic meanings so when I had the choice of what colour knife I chose the yellow one symbolically so let's go we're going to separate the connection between the birds and cut that bloody eye out permanently without cutting my try not to cut myself. I'll cut it from the back. Okay. And I'm gonna cut that bird out. So those pieces I'll just stick them all in a box, I'll cut that all out later, so it doesn't take much time here. Um, sometimes I do this distraction listening to music, so I sort of just quite relax doing it. I'm a little bit hyper aroused at the moment, so I'm talking a bit faster, I'm aware I am. Very self aware from watching the videos and learning um, from myself. Um, so this one here, I'm going to separate the bird clouds from those mountains. Get rid of those steep mountains that are so difficult. Yeah. Not very safe with a knife, am I? So get rid of those, those mountains, which will just go in a box. I'll cut that all off later. This is to do with triggers, to do with sexual trauma. Get rid of that bloody cockroach. Emphasis on the cock. We've got this um, dragonfly, which also represents mainly death and sexual trauma. Okay, so some of these are ugly things, but I make them look pretty, don't I? Kind of. Changed my name to Zanthi. I think I was trying to repurpose the X for sex, which I couldn't guess in a hangman game when I was five years old with some 
fucking asshole, basically. I'm feeling angry now. <laughs> this is actually quite therapeutic. Uh, it's very, 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 very rare for me to feel like I shouldn't anger. Okay. So that fucking asshole. Teenage babysitter. There was actually two of them. <clears throat> monster. So that's why the monstery looking eyes in there that I saw. Um, gonna cut this butterfly free from the line. So that it can fly, fly free. This might look crazy to you. But I found this immensely therapeutic to sometimes destroy shit that I created. Or my shit. I don't need to um, I don't get out of control and smash up other people's shit. I decide when it's time to get rid of Oh, that worked. Um, symbolic shit. So this is cardboard so, and it's also got paint on it so it will be quite hard to, um, to cut so I might have to just do it in the garage later. But I'm going to try and later on get rid of that monster. I did another video a while back when I got rid of the other monster that was in this original painting. And I ugh, used a chisel because this is really hard because it's thick garage and oil paint plus thick corrugated cardboard to rip apart. It's very difficult, but it's actually a really good frustration to rip cardboard. If you're ever frustrated and you need an outlet, I suggest ripping cardboard. So that is half of that. Monster, this reminds me of a freaking clown, like a joker or something. Uh, this is fantastically therapeutic. Get rid of mm, some of that energy. Because I don't usually feel the emotion of anger, I just feel this hyper arousal instead, which just kind of turns to shit loads of anxiety if I don't do something with it. So, I think that. Is most of it, and I will probably try and chop these up and use the frames for firewood or something, and keep all the chopped up pieces to repurpose when I am in the mood. Thank you.